With the World Cup upon us, we thought it would be nice to make a little video in the prep room about football. And it starts off with this little uh, trick that you can do where you get someone to try and bounce a bouncy ball between two surfaces like this so that it goes all the way through. And they should find that no matter how hard they throw it, it's, it's almost impossible to get the ball to travel all the way through as long as it hits both the bottom and the top surfaces. And in fact, the harder you throw it, the more extremely it comes back towards you. So what's this got to do with football, you might be wondering? Well, actually, it can be used to explain something that happened at the last World Cup in South Africa in 2010, when England played Germany in the second round. Now, you might remember that uh, just before half-time, with England trailing 2-1, Frank Lampard scored a fantastic goal looping over the keeper, dropping into the goal, that equalised the match and then England swept to victory uh, and became world champions for a second time two weeks later. Or rather, that's what would have happened if the referee hadn't inexplicably disallowed the goal, despite the ball being a clear metre over the line. Now this led to all sorts of uh, discussion about goal line technology and things like that. But what I think is really interesting is that actually the referee wouldn't have needed any technology if he'd only known a bit of physics. So what happened? Well, we know that the ball hit the crossbar, not only on the way in, but also on the way out, after having bounced. Now, realistically, the only way the ball can hit the crossbar twice like that is if it has actually gone into the goal. And that's because of the way it acquires spin when it hits the crossbar. So because the ball is moving fast as it hits and strikes a glancing blow on the crossbar, it picks up lots of spin. And when this bounces, this constitutes backspin. So the ball kicks back and hits the crossbar again. Or in other words, if the ball hasn't gone in the goal, if it only lands on the line, it will bounce out without hitting the bar again. So that's what I was demonstrating before with the perspex box and the bouncy ball. Except there, the first bounce, where it was bouncing on the lower surface, was a bit like the glancing blow on the crossbar, and then the second bounce was like the, the football bouncing on the ground. Now, if we slow that down, we can really see what's going on. Here it is at 2,000 frames a second. Let's flip it upside down so it corresponds a bit better to our goal pace. Now you can see really clearly the way the ball picks up spin on that first bounce. And it also slows down a lot as its kinetic energy is transferred into the spin. And lots of its momentum is also transferred by the friction force to the perspex. And then on the second bounce, this is the bounce that corresponds to Lampard's shot hitting the ground inside the goal. The ball again grips the perspex and even more of that forward momentum is transferred to the perspex so that the ball actually turns around. Now another interesting thing that happens on that second bounce, if you look really closely, is that the spin itself bounces, it changes direction. So what that means is, on that final bounce, it kicks back even harder. So all three bounces involve a large transfer of momentum from the ball to the perspex, and all in the same direction, all serving to send the ball back in the direction it came from. So in summary, I guess there's one thing, one lesson I think that all the referees in Brazil should learn, and that is learn some physics, and then hopefully, Frank Lampard won't end up looking like this.